Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing really well. Happy New Year! Cheers to 2021. 2021. It, I, we live in the future. I'm just fully waiting for the moment that Yoda appears by my side to tell me my fate because we live in the future. Actually, let's be honest, it would definitely be Jar Jar Binks that came to hang out with me. I wouldn't get Yoda. I'd get Jar Jar. Um, how have I ended up, I've, I've started making a, a lovely, deep and meaningful video about values and resolutions and instead I'm talking about Jar Jar Binks. How do these things happen? So I hope you're feeling nice and relaxed and zen. Oh, everything's so calm and peaceful after a wonderful couple of weeks off work. It's not like the world is burning around us. There's only so relaxed you can get when there's just this like constant existential realization that the world is in a deep, ongoing crisis with no end in sight. It was really kind of like jarring and unnerving to be watching Home Alone, loving little Macaulay Culkin, and then you'd like flick over the channel, glance away from the Christmas tree, and Boris Johnson's like telling you to stay away from your loved ones to keep them alive and healthy. <laughs> Ho ho ho. We actually had a pretty nice one and we definitely just made the best of it. Like what else can you do at the moment? You've just got to make the best of what's on your plate, haven't you? Uh, so we had a good one, made a lot of cocktails, really mastered our cocktail skills these days, uh, ate a lot of party food. Like everyone else, we're all riding this storm together. Like I'm really, really missing people. It's been almost a year now since I've seen my friends or my family properly. Um, so yeah, really missing people, but it's actually been fine for us. As I said, we're extremely lucky. Um, we have a lovely space to be in and I think the most kind of like intense words that we said to each other over Christmas The most like raised that voices have been or the most aggy we've been with each other has been playing this new PlayStation game that we've got It's called Sackboy. We get like mortgages and jobs and societal expectations like the most pressure that you can put your long-term relationship through <laughs> is playing like a platform playstation game where you have to collect orbs while you're pretending to be a tiny boy made of cloth anyway so there's a little rundown of what's been going on almost certainly nothing hence why i haven't really been filming because I have nothing to show you and nothing to say. <laughs> and I ummed and aahed over the break about what my like first video was gonna be of 2021. Oh, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a kicker. Usually it's kind of like everyone's tradition on YouTube that you do a what I got for Christmas video. That's what I've always done to like refresh myself and get back into the swing of things. But obviously this year, I mean, not to sound like a complete Dudley Dursley, uh, <laughs> but I didn't really, I didn't really get any presents. <laughs> 36 but last year last year we haven't seen anyone so i have not the usual quantity of presents that it takes to fill a what i got for christmas video i can show you a few though so obviously adam and i exchange our gifts for each other which was really nice and he bought me airpods because i am an extremely on-trend teenager he also bought me which a lot of you will be very excited about this gilmore girls mug i'll try and find it and link it down below if i can and i also got these slippers which are quite hard to show you good job i'm very flexible they're lovely and cozy and literally haven't left my feet for maybe three weeks now how long has it been since christmas yeah like three weeks wow that's kind of gross there is still some presents waiting for me up on the wheel with my family um so maybe i'll do a what i got for christmas video <laughs> <laughs> later down the line if I ever get to see my mum and my stepdad and my brother ever again. I look forward to receiving them in the short time of maybe April 2039. <laughs> that sounds realistic. If you don't laugh you'll cry. Anyway rather than sitting and talking for 15 minutes about my lovely new slippers which I almost certainly could do. I'm gonna resist doing that one today. I decided that it had to, it had to be a coffee break video to kick the year off in the right way, in a way that is authentic to me because I don't know any other way other than coffee and contemplation. So pause this video, go make yourself a hot cup of something delicious, get your veins vibrating in time with mine, increase those anxiety levels, and let's have a cozy little catch up. <laughs> I knew I wanted to film a coffee break video because I really enjoy doing these. Although this one, I have to sit really far forward to get a cute frame. If I sit backwards, I'm gonna look like a tiny hobbit. I had no idea what I was gonna talk about until I was hanging the laundry up yesterday. 
<laughs> my big bang moment was hanging up the laundry. It's always the washing, I swear to God, all my like deep and meaningful and most profound thoughts happen when I'm putting a damp pair of leggings on the maiden. Why? It sends me, sends me west, it sends me really thinking like deep and meaningfully when I'm putting washing on the washing maiden. What's all that about? So I was deep in thought about my kind of like hopes and dreams and plans for the year ahead. Getting like really excited and really kind of inspired and motivated and ready to go and then instantly overwhelmed and anxious and the perfectionist kicks in is like, you can't do any of those things because they won't be good. You know how it goes. That usual thought pattern that everybody has that shows they're coping really well. <laughs> and I was thinking like, oh, I'd really like to do this. That's a really good idea. This should definitely be my priority for the next few months. Oh, but what if people think this? And like, what if people's opinion is this? And what if the feedback is this? And it was really weird, this phrase like, popped into my head. Hang on, I'm gonna have a little, a little sip here. Yeah, it was really weird. This phrase like, popped into my head. And it was really weird, it kind of like pushed all of that doubt out of the way as soon as I thought about it. Um, and it's probably gonna sound like super cheesy and cringe as soon as I say this out loud and I'm gonna be like, oh God, why have I decided to film a video about this? But here we out. It suddenly felt like I'd hit the nail on the head and I had like a bit of a light bulb moment because I thought you decide what holds value. You decide what holds value you decide what holds value. I think it's kind of like a nice mentality to, to kick off the year with. Um, and there's a few different ways that I kind of have been thinking about that ever since, like you decide what holds value. Just kind of like reminding yourself and remembering that you are allowed to make conscious decisions about what really matters to you. Like you're allowed to elect those things that are gonna impact your own decisions. I'm hoping I'm gonna vocalize this well. Oh God, what if I can't explain this properly? <laughs> you make the conscious decision of what is gonna really matter to you in your life and what is worthy of your brain power and your energy and your waking up every day to focus on. Like you're allowed to decide what those things go towards. And I think maybe even more usefully is that on the flip side of that, flip reverse it, and you're also in charge of making the decision of what is not gonna hold value and hold a power over you. You are allowed to make that conscious decision of what is not gonna hold value in your life this year and the year after that and the year after that. When I say these things, I always think, that sounds so obvious. You think you're so clever and so deep and meaningful and profound, but that's the most obvious sentence that anyone's ever said. But hey, I know you're probably looking into your screen right now with one eyebrow raised like, that's it, she's lost it, she's lost the plot. Uh, but sometimes I just need to say these things out loud for myself. Is that all right? There might be one person out there that needs to hear it today, but you don't have to pay mind to things that don't bring you goodness, goodness, that don't bring you the good stuff. Don't pay mind to things that don't bring you the good stuff. So for example, something that I really, really struggled with last year and that really kind of dictated massively um, what, what I was doing and what I was putting out into the world, something that really dictated that massively was that I was really kind of feeling the weight of other people's opinions. And I think that's everything, that's something that everyone can relate to, isn't it? Like everyone worries what other people think. Uh, unless you're one of those like amazing people that literally could not give a flying fig. Um, those people are kind of amazing and terrifying. I don't understand how they do it. 99.9% .9 of people care to a certain extent. I think it's just human nature to want to be agreed with and like praised for your decisions. But it's always been such an Achilles heel of mine, as I'm sure it is for a lot of you guys, because I think it's a certain personality type where it's a real Achilles heel because you care too much about what other people think of who you are and what you're doing. I am massively a people pleaser. It is just like a fundamental brick of my build. And as a result of that, I've always found it horribly upsetting when someone, when I become aware that someone doesn't like me, <laughs> I find it really hard to sit with that. And I always think that like, I was gonna say, 
if we're in a zombie apocalypse, let's be honest, we're basically already there. It's just a matter of when we're in a zombie apocalypse <laughs> at this point. Um, I always think I will inevitably die. I'll be doing something like, oh, I'll, I'll pop out on a snack run. I'll make sure everyone's having a really nice time. And then in that, I will become the snack in that process. <laughs> if you kind of take half an hour or so to kind of sit and think about these things and think about the things that hold you back and that put those barriers in front of you all the time and that send you down another path when actually maybe you're thinking I'd quite like to go left but I should, I should I'll probably I should probably go right if there's if there's things like that in your life it's a really really useful exercise to sit and kind of write it down see it in front of you think about it on paper and you can make that conscious decision that actually other people's opinions shouldn't have a controlling effect or a, a real kind of hold on your life decisions. And once you have that conscious decision, it's like a real light bulb moment, I think. It's so easy to, be to become passive about the things that hold you back, but it's really important to not be passive about them and to really kind of think about them and think about where they're coming from and realise that they're not this all-consuming overpowering core that runs through you like it's something that can be changed and something that can be you know overcome i really kind of have over the past like 12 months or so like really capped the potential that i was kind of nurturing um which sucks a little bit and i don't want to do that anymore in fact it really sucks and i really don't want to do that anymore so i'm making the conscious decision to not hold value in places that it doesn't belong <laughs> and instead that value can shift over it's almost like a game of tetris isn't it like trying to fit your values together the value that you are placing somewhere else can totally be shifted over onto your own happiness and your well-being and your prosperity and your progression and potential like that is where the value belongs rather than on things that don't matter. Other people's opinions, what you look like, that is probably such a relevant one for this channel. I know that we're all very similar in those kind of terms in that maybe your body or your weight has held you back before and that has taken the most value. That value can be placed somewhere else um, and there is so much more that that value could do for you. I definitely did that with my body image almost like subconsciously because I just reached breaking point with it and I reached that point where I was so tired of hating myself and so tired of that hate taking up so much of my priority. I was so, so done with body image and weight and weight loss and crazy diets and stuff holding so much value. I was just so done with it that I think that almost happened kind of subconsciously for me. Um, but that value has been placed elsewhere now. Like I look after myself so much better. I kind of place value on taking time for myself a lot more. Um, and I think that's kind of like the same energy that I turned from a negative into a much more positive thing. What other people think of me, the size of my thighs, what people might be saying in the background, keeping strangers happy. Like none of those things actually bring me any benefit. <laughs> in any way. So rather than New Year's resolutions as such, I've kind of realised that I don't want those factors to make my decisions for me anymore. And I don't want them to affect my confidence level anymore either. I don't think I've ever really realised how much those things have held me back until I really sat down and, you know, brainstormed and got my rainbow pens out and thought about it the other day. I sat and thought like, what is holding me back from all these things that I want to achieve? And it was all things that are not worthwhile. I will warn you that if you kind of sit down and have a think about this and really kind of lay it all out in front of yourself, um, you it's it's almost like quite upsetting to think about like it might not have really occurred to you before that how much these factors have kind of determined the decisions that you've made and the situations that you found yourself in. It made me kind of sad but it also made me quite frankly completely unwilling to let it continue and to just keep rolling along with that being a part of how I live my life like no <laughs> so if you want to know my new year's resolutions i mean i don't really have proper ones but i suppose in the frame of this being like hey new year fresh start mine is to focus on the values word of the day word of the day v for values the values that are really 
really important to me as a human being rather than the ones that have kind of crept their way in like a little sneaker through you know pressures and social media and whatever these values that are kind of formed uninvited in my head I want to focus on the ones that have been invited since the beginning or that are new now and that I really want to concentrate on to let them dictate my decisions more this year there's the motivation you were looking for. <laughs> I'm like fully recommending that you do this as well. It was a really good like start to the year for me. And hey, Janu the January's, January is in general is a whole start, isn't it? So it doesn't have to be like January 1st that you do this. Like it's a really good thing to do anytime really. You have to do a little bit of work and actually invest like half an hour, 40 minutes into thinking about what they actually are for you. I think they change for you as you get older and you learn more about life. Like when I was 18, if you'd asked me what my values were and given me a list and asked me to pick them out, honestly, they would be very, very different to the ones that I have now. When I was a teenager, they would have been things like, well, beauty would have been the absolute top of the list. It was my one and only priority, like admiration, achievement, which might still be one now to some extent. Approval from others would have been absolute top of the list. And now I'm nearly 30 like very nearly 30. I literally, we'll talk about that another day. Now I'm nearly 30, the, those values look very, very different, which I think is very normal and is actually a good thing because it means, you know, you're kind of progressing as a person. <laughs> so there's lists online, there's books you can get of it as well. I haven't really invested in any books yet, um, but there's lists online. I will link one down below, which I thought was a really quite like well-rounded one of like hundreds of values. And I really recommend like printing them out or putting them on your iPad and going through them and circling the ones or like highlighting the ones that feel really loud and that are screaming at you. It's just a really good like inward looking activity to do for yourself. Uh, I didn't really mean to do it the other day, but ended up doing it anyway. And it's like a little bit of a wake up call as to like who you are. And like in this year, year and a half that we've had now, I don't know if anybody else has kind of felt like they've lost themselves a little bit because things that defined you before maybe aren't there anymore. Like the friendship and the relationships that you've kind of bounced off and that kind of have, you know, shaped you and defined you aren't as accessible anymore. We can't see people. And those activities that we love to do and maybe we can't do anymore or your work, if that's a huge fundamental part of you, if those things have kind of left you feeling like a bit almost like washed out or a bit like someone's kind of rubbed you out with a with a rubber this is a really good way of almost like reminding yourself of your core beliefs and what kind of shapes you really if you take all those things away this this shape of you still exists which is quite a nice comforting feeling at the moment so when i did it i tried to choose eight out of this huge list i tried to choose eight values that um really kind of hit me like a punch in the face. Um, it's quite hard to do because you go through everyone and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's important. That's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Every so, every so often you see one and you're like, who's picking that? But uh, hey, these are the things that make us human, I guess. But um, yeah, I tried to choose eight that really, really stood out to me and I had to like whittle it down. It was like rounds of the X Factor. If you are interested, I mean, this might be quite an interesting thing to share actually. I'd really like to know if you go and do this, tell me what the eight are that come out for you as well. I would really like to know. Um, if you are interested, the eight that I came up with in the end were, <laughs> in alphabetical order, ambition, compassion, contentment, creativity. I'm all about the C's, it turns out. Ambition, compassion, contentment, creativity, determination, happiness, love, and potential. And as I said, it took me a little while to whittle it down to eight, but I think eight is a good number. It's not too many. Um, it all fits nicely onto a little square piece of paper um, and it's it's enough to kind of like give you a, a bit of a well-rounded picture of what really matters to you. But I now have written those words like in a list all together. They are above my desk in my office. I see them every day. Every time I look up or glance up from my laptop, from my work, those words are in front of me. And to me, I find that a way more useful and driving motivation than having like, I will hit 200,000 subscribers or I will make X amount of money this year. Um, Cause quite often those targets 
really feel very very heavy and stressful and intense if they're numerical targets especially where it's like a very specific thing you want to hit they can really stress you out and a lot of the time it's just down to luck anyway with stuff like that it's just about what kind of lands on your plate isn't it and you can't really do a lot about them but having those values as the things that you want to achieve and focus on instead it's a lot it's a lot more of like a kinder motivation to yourself, I think. And it's basically like reminding yourself anything that's not those things, anything that's not compassion, determination, you know, potential, love. Any, if I'm not focusing on it, on those things, it's a waste of time. It's like giving yourself a little bit of clarity. I think the start of the year can be pretty overwhelming. It's all about, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to achieve? What are you going to hit? But thinking about these kind of factors and values gives quite a lot of clarity. It definitely helps to inform your decisions anyway and it gives you a little nudge in the right direction. It might just be a small nudge but it it just gives you that little go on you know this is the right way if, as long as stick to these and it's it's not gonna be bad. It's a little bit of quiet encouragement I think because um, if you feel like you're heading towards the things that really matter to you they'll be they might be totally different to mine they might be the total opposite but if you're heading towards the values that matter to you then that's the way to go. You'll see that when you're putting the important things at the top the irrelevant stuff really shows itself more clearly as well and that you can get rid of and that is not going to be important to you this year. So in conclusion I am personally choosing to give value to the things that nourish me. I will give value to creating things in my personal life because that is what I really enjoy as well as creating things in different forms for my work. That is what makes my soul feel good. And I will give value to focusing on my relationships and nurturing them and making them strong and positive. And I will also give value to my career and, you know, potential. Anything that falls into those eight words that really mean something to me, they deserve energy and attention and my time. And anything that doesn't, Hey, scram buddy, get out of here. Sayonara, see you never. And if that video doesn't clearly prove that I need to lay off the caffeine, I don't know what will. <laughs> I have no idea what I just said to you, but I can confirm that the word of the day is values and that we're all gonna go and do a nice mindfulness exercise after this video, right? So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I'm not gonna say I hope it was helpful because I feel like it probably wasn't. Um, but I hope it's provided some nice background noise while you do something else. <laughs> Let's have a chat about this in the comments. This will actually be a good one to have a chat about. I really wanna know if you do this um, and you find your eight values, I wanna know what they are. So let me know in the comments. It'll be really interesting to see each other's, I think. Maybe you'll find some people who match up exactly with yours. That would be quite cool. And I'll see you very soon with another video. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>